Hey everybody, Corey from Netta's Nursery in Posen here, and I wanted to give you another little behind the scenes update of what's going on around here. And today we hosted two workshops. Those went really well. The first one was in the morning and it was uh, uh, plant and paint. So what we had was a group of people who came in and we talked to them about, about begonias and they got to choose a begonia. We talked about the different types and then we talked about begonia care and for the cliff notes for those of you who are wondering, begonia care, usually people who kill begonias, they kill it with too much love. So they either overwater it, sometimes they over fertilize it, they fuss with it too much. It's usually one that needs a little bit of being left alone, let it kind of dry down between waterings and they usually do really well and they're usually really easy to grow that way. It's when you're giving them lots of water and, and fussing with them all the time that they start giving you trouble. At least that's been my experience. So Anyway, they came through, they did that, they got to pick their, their plants, and then we showed them how to pot them and what kind of soil to use. Then from there, they went into the painting part, which was offered by Allison Ray Campbell. She's a fantastic artist. We are very fortunate to have her come in and do that session. And I think the, the group really did enjoy it. It was just one of those unique experiences. And hey, they got to be in the greenhouse, got their hands dirty, got to create some stuff. I think they really did enjoy it. Then in the afternoon, we did uh, one called uh, Large Container Planting. And that's where the group got to come in and they were gonna plant up a 16 inch container. Uh, we gave them the basics, but overall they got to pick whatever they wanted. Some of them had very specific needs, so we gave them that one-on-one -on -one kind of coaching on what to pick. So one person uh, had just morning sun, so we talked about what plants would do well there. Another person, it was all about deer resistance and plants that the deer weren't going to eat. And another person I suspect is not one for keeping up on watering because she was very interested in drought-tolerant plants. So uh, I think I'm on to you. But we, I think, steered her in the right direction so that she has plants that she's not going to have to worry too much about and they can afford a little neglect if they need to or if they need to be able to make it through something. So fingers crossed that goes well. I did notice they probably, a lot of them over planted. There's probably more plants in there than they need, but I will say those planters are going to look beautiful when they come pick them up probably in about what, six weeks or seven weeks or so. Uh, so it's gonna be fantastic, but I bet by the end of the season, they're gonna go, oh, these are really big. Like these are really packed full, but I think they're gonna be beautiful. And so I'm not too worried about it, but uh, it's just always one of those things when they're tiny plants now, it's really hard to pull back, but I think they're gonna do just fine because the, the planter's big enough at 16 and a half inches, it, it can handle a lot of plants and it's a lot easier to keep watered. So that went really well. And if I were to be completely honest with you, Workshops aren't necessarily my favorite thing. It's, I think I'd much rather be talking to you like through the lens of my camera onto your screen than to be talking face to face in this kind of situation. I'm not sure why, it's just maybe where my comfort level is, but it's very different though once people get here and everybody we have, they're always so appreciative and they're so kind and they're so just great people. I get over that really quick and we always end up having a really good time. But I think also I'm kind of jumping tracks when a workshop comes in, so I'm all plants, all plants, all plants. And then it's like, oh, people. Now I got to think about people. And it's just a different kind of thing. So anyway, that's just my take on that part of it. The other thing we're celebrating this week is the arrival of our Lizianthus. And we affectionately call them Lizzie's. We've been selling them for years. In fact, we would sell them in kind of the six packs and we'd sell them in 36 count flats. And we had 15 colors and we had thousands and thousands of them. They were a very popular plant because not many places would carry them, especially around here. So people fell in love with Lizzie's. We were loving them long before they became such a popular plant. Now that, you know, they're, they're really a hot item. But what happened two years ago is that our grower stopped providing them in the size and the quantities that we were used to getting them. So suddenly we would have to get just the itty bitty size, like, you know, the tip of your finger size, and we'd have to get 200 of each color. And then once we got them, we'd have to pot them up and bring them along and, and grow them a little bit more. And it was becoming, or it would become more work and we weren't ready to adjust for that. It's, you know, in gardening, a lot of times when you have something that works, you kind of keep going with it. And anytime you change, like that can lead to great success or great, you know, opportunities, but it also opens you up to risk. And we just, we couldn't pull it off. And so then this year, that grower offered them in 36 count cells or, you know, like our, like our regular plants come in. So plugs that we were able to plant up and we thought, now we can give it a try and give it a go again and see what happens. So we got a very limited quantity because we weren't sure what size they'd come in at, what quality they'd be. Because one thing that would happen with the grower is that there was always several flats that would come in that clearly were just transplanted like days before they were shipped. So they'd be the little tiny plugs, but they jiggled around in shipping. So all the plugs had come out of the trays. And so we would have to spend all this time with our little pencils and our 
pegs and, and basically replant all of the Lysianthus when they came in. Not all of them came that way. A lot of them came in well-rooted and in good shape, but there were always several trays that came in bad like that. And it was a lot of work. And I kept thinking, if these come in like that, we're going to be in trouble. So we couldn't risk you know, buying a large quantity. Good news. They came in beautiful. They're nice and big. They were well-rooted. In fact, I'll sh the Lizzie won't like this, but I'm going to show you. I'm going to just dig this one up because they were just planted yesterday. So they should be okay. Yeah. So let's see. So you can see like roots all the way around the edge. They came in exactly at the stage that we wanted them to. And they were pretty big. Now they were a little beat up from shipping. So they all kind of bowed a little bit. Uh, they seemed a little bit flimsy when we got them, but they bounced back up. I think this little bit of sun, a little bit of water has really done good for them. It's a little warm in here though right now. Lizzie's are a plant that when they're small like this, they don't mind it cold. So I need to get them closer to the door where there's a really nice draft. It'll keep the temperature down. If they're in too much heat, they tend to get really spindly, like real thin uh, stems. And then they also sometimes can have like malformed leaves and, and buds and things like that if it's too warm for them. Uh, once they get a little bigger, they tend to be much better with handling some of the heat, but they really don't like it over 85. So uh, here in Michigan, that's a, they're an easy plant to grow for us because we don't get over 85 until way later in the season. So, but in the greenhouses here, it's pretty warm and I'm actually breaking a sweat just telling you about it. Uh, so we're really happy that this was a success because that means next year we can get more. Uh, and we only have four colors this year. So we feel, you know, a little, a little naked, uh, but my mom's not doing the floral arrangements anymore. So we just picked kind of some that were our favorites and we're going to give it a go. And I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, we are going to be moving these into a cooler greenhouse after this. So we're just going to give them a couple days here where it's a little, little more relaxed and then we'll move them into that uh, other area. Our big question right now is to pinch or not to pinch. And the thing with Lysianthus and what we would normally do is like when we had a six uh, pack, we would pinch half of them in the pack and we leave the other ones. Because what happens with Lysianthus is if you don't pinch it, you get a nice, usually a long stem. If they're grown properly, you'll have that nice long stem. And oftentimes then when we cut the flower, we would get a second bloom off of them a little bit later on. So that was really great. Uh, but then if we pinch these now, we'll get branching and you'll get shorter stems, but a lot more flowers. So I think with the size that these are at right now, it would pay for us to give them that pinch. I think for our customers, they're not growing them for you know wedding bouquets or floral bouquets. They're growing them for personal use. And the ones that we pinch, the stems are decent size. They're just not that, you know, like 28 inch or whatever. I don't can't remember what's, what length they can get to. They can get really long if they're grown really well. Uh, and if you have them netted, that's the other thing. If you want those long stems, you generally have to have netting to hold them up so that they don't get all kind of curvy. So I think for the people that we're selling these to, I think they're going to appreciate it being pinched. They're going to appreciate the more flowers and they're not going to go through the trouble of staking and netting and all that kind of stuff. So we're just happy to have the Lizzie's back. Ooh. Oh, look at that. We're just happy to have the Lizzie. And then as far as our online store, so we do these spring pre-sales for annuals where people can pre-order their plants and then we take care of them for the next seven weeks. And uh, that we are at our numbers that we hit last year right now, which is incredible because really we've only been open. We were open on Monday. We had to close it down for two days to catch up. And then we were open the late Thursday and Friday and and now it's Saturday. So what is that? One, two, basically three days. We hit the numbers that we hit in 12 days last year. So it's a little crazy to have that many sales come in that fast. And we only have a specific amount of space. And because we've hit that number, I really should close down the online store. But I also have this feeling that like I know our customers and I know we have a lot of people who work during the week and they have families and being able to kind of take the time to place an order really is something that they need the weekend to do. So I'm definitely going to just keep it open at least till midnight. I, I'm going to try to, I'm going to kind of look at our space. I'm going to get the couple orders that just came in placed and just see, because right now I'm starting to cut in to the area that we have reserved for our backup plants. Uh, so if I start taking up too much of that space, then we've got to find an alternate area for backup plants and it could, could get a little messy. I also have a little bit of confidence because pretty much all of our staff are returning. We only have one new person this year and that person's working out very, very well. So the fact that we have all these returners and they did such a fantastic job with the plants that were sold last year, they kind of all worked in rotation. Everybody kind of did different things at different times and it went very well. I have a little bit more confidence that we'll be able to take care of those plants. Uh, if I was missing just one of those people, I. I would have the online store closed right now because uh, I, I don't want to be taking care of plants 
or more plants than we can take care of, that that would be really bad to have awful plants. Like, yeah, you pre-ordered these and we're giving you kind of garbage. I don't want to do that. So um, I'm working through this because I want everybody who wants to order to be able to have that chance, but I also know that we have to cut it off at a certain point. And hitting last year's numbers so quickly, we weren't really expecting it. I figured we'd get there faster than last year, but I didn't think it would be that quick. I mean, that's four times faster as far as sales. So I'm worried that next year basically we'll be sold out like in 24 hours, which would be really crazy. But anyway, I guess too much of a good thing. Now, a couple people did comment and I also got some messages from people about the service that we offer. And I will tell you, it is unusual in this industry. There aren't a lot of places that do it. I do look up and I have found some places that do it. A lot of them charge like a surcharge of like 15 to 25%. And a lot of them have like a really short window, like a two week period that they take care of the plants. So it, it is a unique service. So yes. And uh, someone wrote me and asked, could you please contact my local nursery? I want them to offer this. Can you tell them how you do it? And my answer to them was, you do not want me to contact your local nursery and tell them what goes into it. Because if I do, they will definitely say no because it's not sane, it's not normal, and it's probably not like the best business decision just because these are plants that probably would sell whether we had the service or not. So to do all this extra work, because there is a lot of extra work, especially when you look at the fact that the pre-work getting the website up and running, that's a whole section. Then there's organizing the orders, then there's taking care of the orders, and then there's the logistics of pickup. So though all those things combined is a lot of extra labor that it really is hard for like a small business to be able to accommodate that. And I did appreciate, there was one comment where she said, I talked to my local nursery about this and they had no interest. Now I realize it was probably about space. And you're right, it was probably partly about space, but also just the logistics of it and the organization of it requires a lot of effort and a lot of time and a lot of energy from people. So it's just not something that everybody can do. And to be honest with you, there's a certain point in all of this, like it was probably for me, it was on Tuesday. I was like, why are we doing this? Why are we putting ourselves through this? This is so stressful. This is like, this is way more than we can handle. And you know, you, you start just feeling that kind of weight and that pressure and there's so much still to do. But then we caught up and everything kind of went, you know, was going very well. And there was a moment on Friday where I was, I had kind of my cart filled up with the plants that I needed for the orders and I was pushing it through and I could see into greenhouse three and I could just see our staff and everybody was kind of doing their thing, moving stuff and making stuff happen. There was some trimming going on on the other side and seeing that was, it was kind of magical because I was like, look at these people. Like they have minimal direction. They're just making things happen. They know why they're doing it. Like we are doing this so that the, you know, the customers can have these plants. We're doing this so that the plants, look healthier and they do better. It just, it was very, very nice to see. And it's also, I guess part of it is just like when you have great people and you know how lucky you are, that, I mean, that was my moment on Friday. I was like, I am lucky. I have such a great group of people to work with and we just kind of get stuff done, you know? And that's, that's golden, I will say. And then I also get to work with my family. And my family and I, like all of us work well together. I know that doesn't happen with a lot of families, but we're pretty low key in that sense. We just get the work done and make it happen. So uh, we're very, very lucky that way. So the rest of the week, uh, once we get the online store closed, which really should be right now, but I, I will wait till at least midnight, maybe even into tomorrow morning, but I have to get these placed and kind of get that figured out. And then it's going to be just getting plants kind of taken care of and healthy and all that kind of stuff. And I, I think, you know, that's, that's where we're at. Now we're kind of just in care mode and we move a lot of stuff. Anybody who works at, I think, a greenhouse or nursery, you know what it's like. Like, you're like, oh gosh, you know, we have to move this again because as things sell, you have to move them. As things grow, sometimes you have to move them if you didn't give them enough space. There's just lots of moving plants. It's pretty crazy. Fortunately, it's plants, so you kind of like it because, you know, handling plants is always a little bit more fun than like boxes. Like, can you imagine being the person who has to just move boxes from A to B? Not fun for me anyway. So anyway, Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your comments. I do appreciate it. And I will see you guys all very, very soon in the next video.